one o'clock and we are going to get started. Here we go. Um, welcome everybody to this year's annual EY Connect Day with Junior Achievement. Uh, we are so happy to have all of you here for our virtual leadership and career workshop. So welcome students and EY volunteers. We are also glad that you are here. Students, for those of you who are joining us today, before we uh, begin, I just want to remind you that you can continue to build your leadership skills with Junior Achievement. You can earn our digital badge for career readiness that is all new this year. All you have to do is attend or view five or more of the sessions of uh, the J Junior Achievement New Jersey's Women's Future Leadership Academy. This is certainly one of them. Uh, complete a survey and submit a final project. It is easy. We hope all of you uh, will do that this year. You can also, if you're not already, you can become a Women's Future Leadership Academy student ambassador. Details for that and the digital badge are on our website, janjacademy.org. So please visit our website, students and volunteers. You can register for upcoming sessions and learn more about how to get more involved. And on that note, just wanna thank EY, our partners, um, who have uh, been with Junior Achievement for so long and it is because of you and because of your organization that we are able to continue to do this and provide leadership opportunities and career building opportunities for our young people. So thank you for that. So today's agenda, we've got a really exciting program and uh, certainly would like to thank the organizers of today's event. We really appreciate all the hard work that you've done behind the scenes. Um, we're going to kick it off with an exciting diversity in the workplace panel discussion featuring leaders from EY and moderated by four of our fantastic student ambassadors, Kavya, Jocelyn, Aliyah, and Leah. They are going to take turns asking questions of our panelists. After that, uh, we're going to go into um, some, some information about co collaboration and team building in the workplace. And certainly all of our volunteer mentors who are joining, if you have any thoughts that you'd like to share, about collaboration team building in the workplace, we invite you to do that. Then we're going to go into some breakout sessions that will be led by our EY volunteer mentors who are joining us today. And then um, we will bring it all back together right around uh, two o'clock or so for closing remarks. And we'll invite any of you to share your takeaways, your final thoughts for your closing remarks, students and volunteers. So without further ado, again, we'd like to uh, give a huge thanks to our Junior Achievement New Jersey and EY Diversity in the Workforce panel. So we have learned that diversity in the workforce is extremely important. And when you, when you get people together with different perspectives and viewpoints and different backgrounds, that's when you're really able to uh, work better as a team and have, achieve success within your organization. So we thank uh, our panelists who are joining us today. Um, Irini Raquel, Robert Wichendahl, Barbara DiMaggio, and Ram Iyer. Thank you all. So what we're going to do is we're going to, our, our student ambassadors are going to take turns um, asking questions. And uh, our panelists, you can answer the questions um, in the same order each time to make it easier for you. So after the, your student, after the student asks you the question, um, we just uh, simply uh, go in the same order. We'll start with Irini, and then Robert, Barbara, and then Ram. So we'll go in that same order, make it easier for everybody. And then um, uh, panelists, just maybe uh, just a, a, a relatively brief answer so that we can um, uh, finish the panel right around uh, the half hour mark before we go into our breakouts. Um, and again, we really appreciate um, all of you joining us today. Students, if you have any questions, um, please feel free to post them in the chat room. And we're going to invite our, our volunteers to answer your questions when we go into our breakout rooms. That way we can have more, a more engaged discussion. Okay, so without any further ado, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that we can see everybody. And uh, I will uh, turn it over to you, Pavia, uh, to please uh, introduce yourself and ask our panelists the first question. Hello, everyone. I'm Kavya Venkatesan. I'm a sophomore at Overridge High School, and I'm very excited to be able to moderate this panel with my fellow student ambassadors. 
I've been involved with JA since I was in middle school, and the volunteers that I've had the opportunity to meet have taught me so much. So on behalf of all of the students, thank you so much for being here. Let's begin with introductions. Please tell us your name and a little bit about your job at EY. And I would think we'll start with Ms. Raquel. Hi, Kavya. Thank you so much. And such a pleasure to be here with you all today. Um, my name is Irini Raquel, and I've been with EY for nine years. Uh, I'm based out of our Hoboken office, but because of COVID, haven't really been there for a little over two years. Um, I work in our learning and development team here at EY. I'm a technology learning consultant and I support our consulting practice. And what that simply means is I work with our practice leaders um, within our technology practice to really identify what kind of emerging technology skills do our people at EY need so we could be successful in the market. And then I partner with them to develop a strategy on how to get our people trained in these skills. Um, I definitely love with what I do. I get to experience firsthand how quickly technology is changing and how uh, challenging it could be for someone who's just trying to explore which areas that they're trying to uh, develop in or potentially pursue as a career. So um, I definitely, definitely empathize with you guys with the number of different technologies that are out there and where to try to put your focus on. Uh, excited to be here with you and looking forward to our conversation today. Excellent. Hi, everybody. I'm Rob Wichendall. Nice to meet you. And Kavya, thank you for the great introduction. I started working for EY. I joined them in uh, August of 2019. And um, I was brought in to grow the PEGA practice for financial services. And you may wonder what's PEGA. PEGA Systems is a software development tool to build uh, applications for process automation. So for example, um, some of the bigger projects I worked on was um, when you or your parents see a transaction from your debit or credit card that you don't know what it's about, I built applications that banks use to help solve that problem or get your money back. So that's one example. And um, so for a number of years, I've been working there. Um, and most of my career has been financial services. But more recently, in February, I got um, uh, an opportunity to work on a COVID uh, vaccination program for the state of Maryland, which has been um, the job or the project of a lifetime. I've been able to impact uh, the lives of Maryland residents, uh, helping with the vaccination software to schedule and get vaccines or to get the records. So it was a very exciting opportunity. Um, and EY gave me that flexibility to do these types of different projects. Um, I live in New Jersey as well, uh, based out of the Hoboken office. Um, I am married to my wife, Nikki, and I have three kids, Sarah, Jack, and Julie. Uh, Sarah goes to University of Delaware. Jack goes to Widener University, and Julie is a senior in New Providence High School. Nice to meet you all. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Kavya, for the introduction. Amazing. Um, so uh, my name is Barbara DiMaggio. I've actually uh, only been at EY for about a year and a half. I started in January 2020, so like two months before, you know, the world really changed, um, which has been a, an interesting experience getting to navigate such a matrix organization completely virtual. Um, and that definitely was not something I had <laughs> signed up for when I originally joined the firm. Um, but I actually work in the brand marketing and communications team. Um, so what that really means is I do everything when it comes to external communications. So a lot of our PR, uh, which is public relations and social media, um, specifically tied to our diversity, equity, inclusion initiatives. Um, so it's been awesome getting to support um, a lot of our leaders, especially our new America's uh, DEI leader. Um, but yeah, it, it's been a really interesting opportunity. And um, when I was also a student, I always knew I wanted to work in public relations. So it's been interesting getting to kind of go through all the different um, brackets of my career so far. But I'm really excited for this conversation. Thank you so much for uh, letting me join. Thank you. And Ron, have you joined? Yeah, I'm here. Can All you hear right. me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Awesome. So, hey, hi, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Ron Iyer. 
I'm a managing director in financial services in FSO uh, in the wealth and asset management sector. And I am absolutely thrilled to be a part of the endeavor today. Today in EY, we have about more than 10,000 folks who are volunteering across the Americas and EY's purpose for building a better world, better working world. And it is it is an amazing, amazing experience to be to be a part of this uh, this community. I joined EY six months ago, and uh, as Barbara mentioned, that were you know in COVID, joining a new organization, a matrix organization, and remote is always going to be an interesting learning experience. But I would say that you know being curious and being able to uh, be passionate about what you want to do are the two main drivers with which you know one can easily navigate the organization and accomplish our goals. Uh, growing up, you know, I came from India 20 years ago, and adjusting to the United States as a culture was something that was a new experience for me. But what really got me going was you know being curious about technology or being curious about uh, about financial services it, it's really shaped my career over time and i'm totally excited to be a part of this endeavor today so thank you for the opportunity and welcome excellent thank thank you panelists for those great answers um we appreciate it and thank you kavya so now i'd like to turn it over to our next amazing student ambassador jocelyn for our next question and uh, panelists will go in the same order uh, so Jocelyn, welcome. Hi everyone. My name is Jocelyn. I am a senior in high school. I go to Bordentown Regional High School. Um, so as high school students, we are often asked what we want to do after we graduate. Could you please tell us what skills and education someone would need to get hired in your industry? And has anything changed as a result of the pandemic? I think I'm first again. <laughs> um, so great question. And thank you, Jocelyn. It's nice to meet you. Uh, in the industry that I'm in, which is, uh, you know, technology, learning and development, uh, a lot of the key skills that we utilize on a day to day basis is project management, very project management heavy communication and big emphasis on building relationships. So um, Having those three skills really have set us up for success as a team, since we are partnering with our leaders across the entire US firm uh, and have a lot of different balls that we need to manage and kind of juggle at the same time. So I would say definitely number one is project management skills. Um, and with COVID, COVID has turned everything upside down, right? Uh, we've had to uh, adjust very quickly to the ways that we meet and the ways that we train our people. And so uh, that means we had to uh, bring in new technologies. We had to learn those technologies. We had to uh, find effective ways to meet and deliver on our goals, uh, not just learning the technology itself, but learning how to communicate effectively with one another in a virtual environment. And so uh, prior to COVID, being able to meet face-to-face -face and do trainings face-to-face, -face, especially on technologies, um, you were able to get a sense of nonverbal cues and, and other ways to connect with people that um, you, know, you can't necessarily achieve in a virtual environment in the same exact method. So we'd ha we've had to definitely adjust the way that we're connecting with people and reaching them through this new virtual environment, such as Zoom that we're on here today and Microsoft Teams. Great, Avini. Thank you. And thanks, Jocelyn, for that great question. Um, so it's, it's from my perspective in technology and software development, you know, we're looking a little bit more down into a specific niche uh, skill set. Um, and so what skills do you need to develop over time? Well, first, it, finding yourself, if you find yourself as a person who really likes to solve puzzles or solve problems, 
Um, that's a, a good attribute because when we're developing software, it's the software is most often being built to solve a problem. <clears throat> and another really good attribute to have that you look within yourself is um, being organized. As a software developer, the code that you write is it's very important to be very well structured and, and organized in how you build it. Um, because it, you can have tons of freedom in, in what you build and how you build it, which is exciting. Um, but at the same time, things can get a little uh, wonky if you don't have it organized, and therefore you get defects. And you know, when you're using an app and it's not working the way you want, well, it could be because maybe the code is not organized, right? So that's another aspect. Another really important skill that I noticed is uh, communication. Um, being able to active, you know, active listening skills, being able to listen to the person that has a problem because you're trying to solve their problem. <clears throat> and then being able to uh, you know, speak and write about what you're doing um, in a clear and concise manner. So communication is really important. And then from the education perspective for software development, an engineering background is, is a good thing to have, or even a trade school. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a university. Uh, see a lot of successful people just start because they have a passion to build things and they want to try it and they try trade school and they, they escalate through there. Um, and then I think the most important piece is just an eager um, attitude, you know, like you and, and a, um, an attitude that you want to learn because in technology, things are always changing. So uh, that's what I love about the industry is I'm always learning something new, learning about new technologies and how to apply them. So um, if you have that hunger to always want to learn and try new things, technology is really fun to get into as well. I hope that helps. Awesome. Um, so in the public relations and communications industry, really, you know, like some of my um, other panelists mentioned, like you need to be organized, you need to have great communication skills, but also you need to have great public speaking skills and have some writing skills as well. Um, and that's something that I really, you know, wanted to practice when I was even in high school. Um, when I was in high school, I was a part of the school newspaper. I was a part of the school yearbook. And that really gave me an opportunity to figure out, oh, is this a route that I want to take when I have the opportunity to advance my um, education in college? So I think being, taking the time to take part in a lot of these other um, opportunities that you have outside of the classroom is really important, like right now, <laughs> like in JA, like being involved in organizations like this. Um, but yeah, when it came to the pandemic and one of the skills that I really um, honed in on was being an intentional communicator, specifically when it comes to networking, um, because we weren't able to bump into somebody at the office or, you know, grab somebody for lunch, you really had to take the time to reach out to the people that you wanted to connect with. Let that be, you know, other leaders within, you know, the firm or other colleagues that you'd never had an opportunity to really meet. Um, so, you know, that's something that I'm going to take with me, you know, hopefully when we're past the, the pandemic is just being an intentional communicator. Thank you, Barbara, Irini, and Robert. So I, I have an interesting uh, story on that one. I started my career after my engineering in electronics. I started my career in technology consulting. And then after a 20-year sabbatical, I'm back into technology consulting, right? So it, it, I, think, I think I couldn't you know, uh, agree more with what Barbara, Irini, and Robert mentioned. Software engineering is a lot about aptitude. Coming from an electronics background, I knew a little bit about software, but I literally had to apply myself. But the one, the one attribute that, the one quality that really got me going was A, being curious, and B, is the aptitude and keeping a certain level of tenacity to not give up on a problem, but to keep at it until you solve it, right? Over time, it, it naturally shapes software engineers and uh, to be a very, uh, very good at what they do. Now, the other thing that Barbara and Irene mentioned is on communication, and I think Robert also touched upon that. Many a times, the problem, understanding the problem is the key. Right? Once you understand the problem, solutions, there are, there are many solutions. Sometimes, you know, there is more than one way to solve it. And 
over time and experience, you would always easily understand which is the right solution for the problem. But understanding the problem is key and excellent communication skills, hearing what the problem statement is, hearing what your colleagues are talking about or your client is talking about is the key to succeed in, in technology consulting uh, as an industry. And, you know, definitely, you know, Eddie mentioned about the learning and development. There is a lot of help and support that firms EY specifically provides to new incumbents into the industry. And one can absolutely take advantage of that to be, to be the best at what they do in this industry. Hopefully that helps. Absolutely. Panelists, thank you for some great answers here. Certainly some things to think about. Um, we appreciate it. Just a reminder, students and, um, and volunteers, please feel free to use that chat room. So volunteers, if you have an answer to the question as well, um, please feel free to post your answer in the chat room. And students, if you have questions, you can use the chat room. Um, so now we will move on to our third student ambassador for our next question. Uh, Aaliyah has joined us, our student ambassador, Aaliyah. Uh, so welcome, Aliyah. Hi, my name is Aliyah Vincent. I'm a sophomore at Lenape Regional High School, and I'm very excited to be here. So my question is, one of the things we've learned in JA is the importance of setting goals. What are some career goals you set for yourself? Do you encounter any challenges along the way? And if so, how did you overcome them? Great question, Aliyah. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Uh, Setting goals is tremendously important. Um, the best advice that I received around goal setting is to try to identify short-term goals and long-term goals and the difference between the two, because it could feel pretty daunting when you create a laundry list of things you'd like to achieve for yourself and you don't feel like there's a way to be able to do that. And so being able to think about it in chunks and in smaller uh, ways to kind of achieve them could help you with that. So, um, you know, an example of a short-term goal that I like to kind of have um, is on a month to month basis, can I try something new? Whether that's meeting somebody new um, to help build my network, learning about a new technology, not necessarily how to use that new technology, but learning about something new that um, I'm not yet familiar with. Um, uh, or a new software, or you know, just exposing myself to something that uh, I have not yet exposed myself to on a monthly basis or so. And if I don't accomplish that every month, that's okay. I'm not too hard on myself either. Um, it's looking at the bigger picture and over time, just being open to new experiences. And then on the on the long-term goals, that's really where the heftier ones are, right? Um, ones where it may take you a while to achieve, like actually becoming proficient in the technology that you learned about, right? And it could happen in a year or two or, you know, um, uh, definitely a longer time period. Uh, but, but that's how I like to approach goals and they're absolutely very important. Um, and, you know, along the way, there are challenges that come up, of course, uh, and it's how you deal with those challenges that are important. Um, they could be, you know, I am hoping to make a new connection and the person's unavailable to me. Um, that's okay. That challenge can be overcome. We'll find a time and place eventually. Uh, and it's not, you know, too, too upsetting if it can't happen in the time frame that I initially would like it to. Um, and so just being able to navigate when things don't work the way that you had initially pictured it uh, would be you know, important when you face any challenge that comes your way. Great advice, Mimi. So for, for me, my perspective, um, early in my life, I was, um, my, my goals were not really aligned the right way. I was very f financially focused in my goals. And then I realized, well, that's wrong. And I'm not happy from that. 
So then I started adjusting my thought process of, well, what's kind of important to me in a career? And I broke it down into a, a philosophy where I focus on, well, financial income is important, right? But mental income is also very important. M my ability to learn or my accessibility to learning new things, getting recognition. Um, that's an important thing that makes me feel good. Um, what is the impact of what I'm doing? Um, you know, who and how am I helping? <clears throat> that's an important aspect of my career. And then also the people that I'm working with. Am I happy and I'm uh, excited to work with these folks? So those, you know, five or six things are the, are the things that I tend to look at the most. And when I self-reflect, am I hitting all those points? And, and certain points are more important than others as you go through life. But the most important question to ask yourself is, does it make me happy? Are my career goals making me happy and, give, and satisfying a passion? I, am I getting uh, excited to do that? Because if you ha are happy and you're passionate about something, you're very highly correlated to success because you want to do it. It's no longer a job. It, it's something that you want to do. Um, so when I'm now setting my goals, um, I'm aligning my goals to what makes me happy. So for example, now in, in my job, I'm looking to build technical solutions that will help in the whole entire COVID vaccination space. Um, and I'm very excited about that. So now I'm deriving a plan step-by-step step of how do I you know, do this to you know, create solutions. And we have a methodology in EY about how to do this. And it's, um, so it, it helps a lot too that EY you know, has these frameworks to help us build through our goals and create strategies. But one thing also that I've learned is like I mentioned before, I was, I was wrong by you know, focusing in one way. And I made a couple of mistakes along my career in, in you know, deciding not to go with something I was passionate about and decided to take the safe route. Um, and I learned from my mistakes. And that's the biggest important part I've learned is take risks, don't be afraid to fail. As long as you can learn from those failures, it's definitely gonna make you better. And now that I learned, I wish I, I took more risks earlier and failed sooner because I would be um, uh, much happier in my life and my career um, than what I did now. It took me a while to get to where I am in, in terms of happiness. So, so that's my advice. Yeah, I really resonate with something that Robert said. Don't be afraid to fail. That was definitely a fear of mine going through uh, the beginning stages of my career. Um, and when we think about the difference between short-term short -term goals and long-term goals, I personally never took the time to really put together realistic short-term goals. I was always thinking ahead, like, oh, I want to be a manager here, and I, and I want to make sure I lead this team. Um, and when I got to the opportunity where I was leading a team, something I always wanted to do, I realized really quick, wait a minute, maybe I actually don't know how to do this. Maybe I need to take a time and actually figure out how do I become a good leader for my team? Because, you know, sometimes you get in and you're like navigating things, you're directing things. And you're like, wait, I need to take the time to really figure out what kind of leader do my people need me to actually be? So that was definitely a challenge. And one of the ways I, I overcame that was really taking the time to, to really get to know my team, listen to them and figure out what it is they needed from me in order for them to be successful. So, you know, really the takeaway here is just making sure to not be afraid to take a step back and, and be like, wait, maybe I'm not, <laughs> maybe this, maybe I need a, a chance to actually figure out how to be successful in the role that I want to be in. And so being afraid to fail sometimes is a good thing. All right. Now, now my colleagues have made it a little bit difficult for me to answer because they have taken all of the points. But uh, and I totally it, reson it totally resonates with me in terms of you know, don't be afraid to take risks. Goals don't don't make five year, ten year, fifteen year goals. Keep smaller goals as well, so that you know that you are in the right trajectory. Uh, invest in yourself to help towards the goal in a long-term and in a short-term manner, right? The goals cannot just be accomplished without, in, without investment. So these are some very good advice. Thank you for that, Robert, Barbara, and Irene. The, the one other thing that I would add from my personal experience is don't be afraid to change your goals. 
right don't be afraid to be innovative and creative don't be afraid to take a different direction if you feel that you know that is the better avenue for you it will come with time it, it will resonate over time where you might find that okay while you are doing xyz in a job or in a role that you know you are actually good at something else you will discover yourselves over time so be open a little bit to changing your goals as well there is never a right time in your career or a right age goals are always going to be incrementally evolving and changing like two years ago nobody would have thought that this conversation would be completely virtual and remote but now organizations have all evolved five years ago in the industry digital transformation was a buzzword but right now every industry every firm is looking at digital transformation as the way of operating and conducting their businesses so likewise people also align themselves to the new operating model and new working so obviously goals have changed for firms how they operate businesses how they conduct and how people lead their lives like there was never a notion of instacart but now we have instacart to deliver groceries right over at our doorsteps without having to go right so somewhere somebody has evolved and this might be a situation of being forced evolution but evolution happens in different manners that's where i think the most important message i would share in addition to what my colleagues have shared is do not hesitate do not be driven by just one set of mindset on goals goals can evolve it is okay it's perfectly acceptable and be be embracing that change and it will really set you up for success from that point of view and to that point and looking at the questions in here uh, yeah, is that um, my biggest risk I'm taking is right now, uh, I'm looking to change my career to go from financial services to be in the government public health sector and work on specific public health, um, you know, initiatives. So that's a big risk for me, um, you know, moving away from a career from 30 years in one industry and looking at something different. And that's, it's very exciting. And how am I managing that also is leveraging a large network of, of folks. And EY also is giving me that opportunity to be flexible. They want their people to be successful. Um, so yeah, so that's uh, some of my input on that. Yeah, great, great thoughts, Robert. Thank you panelists for, for sharing um, such great information. Um, we have uh, one more question left. And uh, going to turn it over now to another one of our amazing student ambassadors, Leah, who has joined us today with our final question. Welcome, Leah. Hello, everyone, and good afternoon. Thank you all for answering these questions in such insightful ways and providing us with these really amazing and incredible answers. So my name is Leah Garcia. I'm 17 years old. I'm a senior at High Tech High School. I like to consider myself a young female Latina entrepreneur who's determined, disciplined, and sagacious to leave and lead a mark in this lifetime. With that being said, one of the best parts about being involved in JA is the great career advice we get from the speakers and volunteers, as we've seen currently with you guys. Thinking back on your education and career path, what college or career advice would you give to your younger self? Thank you, Leah. And I was hoping for some car karaoke, but I guess we'll have to wait on that. <laughs> um, great question and it's nice to meet you as well. Um, so thinking back, um, I would say uh, back then I put a great emphasis on where to go to college, what to study. Um, and a lot has changed since I've come out of college. I'm uh, a little bit more than 16 years out of college now. Um, and it's, it's not the same world that it was back then. So I think if um, I could go back and give myself any advice, it's to give myself some grace and less pressure around what do I need to study and where do I need to go? And more about um, just making sure I'm pursuing what makes me happy and continuing to learn along the way because learning doesn't stop after 
college, <laughs> right? You continue to develop and learn as a professional and grow within your career. And there's a lot of on the job coaching as well. And um, for full transparency, what I went to uh, college for is not what I'm practicing now. And so it's, uh, it's, I would just summarize it as don't stress too much. <laughs> um, and just focus on where your passions are right now and you'll continue to learn along the way. That's great. Yeah, for me, um, what would I tell my younger self is, um, is don't rush. I'm, I'm always rushing. I rushed through school. I graduated early because I wanted to get a job. And, and then I said, I'll, I'll go back and, and get some more schooling later, you know, higher degrees and, you know, a master's in this, a PhD, I even thought. But um, uh, don't say that to yourself. Just go through the education process, because once you're in the working world, it's really hard to get back to get those uh, substance degrees because, you know, uh, you're you start getting into the whole uh, involvement with money and expenses, right? And um, so it's very hard to do that. And then the final thing is that I second-guessed myself. I didn't follow my instincts because when I did start to find a passion early in my career, primary market research, I was I love doing surveys and writing about it and doing that analysis. And I, I could have pivoted my career at that point at age, what, 28 or something like that, and I didn't. Um, I didn't follow my instinct. I decided to go the safe route and I didn't take the risk. And I regret that, right? I could have had a, a fun time doing that too. Um, so that's what I would tell myself. Again, take more risk and try it. Don't be afraid and follow your passion and finding your passion too. That's a hard part too, right? People say, oh, follow your passion. That's the easy part. And actually it's finding it is, is tough, right? So. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Leah, for this question and for your enthusiasm. Um, so definitely something I would tell my younger self is to speak up more. And that's something I still tell myself every day and trying to remind myself. I think it's hard when you're starting out in your career and you're in a room full of these, you know, incredible accomplished professionals and you think, oh, you know, they don't really want to hear my idea or they don't really care about what I'm thinking. And it's like, no, that's not true. There's a reason you're sitting at that table. There's a reason they want you there. It's really, you know, taking that confidence that you have and, and saying out loud, like your ideas and what you think. Um, and when we really spin this back to what we really are trying to, you know, uh, talk about today, which is diversity in the workplace, like having diverse teams and having a table full of professionals with different perspectives really does create innovation and makes teams stronger. So that's definitely something that I try and remind myself every day and want to make sure I tell you guys today too. All right, Aaron Ra, we'll turn it over to you. Oh, is it me? Sorry. Uh, so it, it, it is an awesome question. Thank you really for this question because it, you know, it really makes us also go back and think about our childhood. And it's always a fun feeling to go back and think about you know going down the memory lane. I was thinking hard about it, right? And just now as the question came along, the biggest advice I would give my younger self is to actually invest in learning, reading, and communication skills. Um, I was not too comfortable in a large setting. Like, you know, I was always very much academic focused, books, happy to do assignments, homeworks, what have you. Like, you know, I was very much academic focused and I kept to myself. I was good in sports and uh, all the other activities, but generally on a day-to-day -day basis, I was more academic than not, right? What I would have, go, I would love to go back and tell us, like you know, to be more knowledgeable about what's happening in and around the industry, what's happening in the society, what's happening in our communities, and so on and so forth. Um, that opens your eyes to all sorts of possibilities. So that's one thing I would definitely, uh, like you know, advise a younger self. And the the one topic which I think as a theme has also been mentioned is don't be afraid to fail. I was one of those guys who would like always try to take the tried, tested, and like, you know, sure route of, you know, navigating school, navigating college, navigating careers. I was one of those uh, early on in my life and career. And, you know, to my younger self, that would be one of my biggest advices. Don't be afraid to fail at all, right? Uh, that 
and there's nothing not, there's nothing to lose because you're only going to learn from it and it's only going to get make it more knowledgeable and more efficient in what you do as you grow older and grow better in your organizations so and in your careers all right wow well that was that was fantastic answers and uh on on all counts all of our panels panelists so uh, thank you again uh our fantastic panelists Irini, robert barbara and rom certainly some great advice um not just for the students but for me as well i really learned a lot from all of you and again huge thanks to our student moderators uh, Kavya, Jocelyn, Aliyah, and Leah, and of course our other students who are joining as well and getting all of this fantastic advice. So please uh, feel free to go ahead and post in that chat room if you'd like to share anything. And I'm going to, uh, we're going to talk a little bit now about, um, about some of the things that the panelists talked about. Uh, it's really apropos. Um, so hopefully everybody can see my screen here. Um, let's see, Robert, can you see my screen? Thank you. All right, so um, again, thanks, huge thanks again to our panelists. And really, you set me up very nicely because I'm going to talk a little bit, not very long, because we want to get into our breakout sessions um, about uh, collaboration and team building in the work. And this really aligns to those skills that you just mentioned that uh, earlier that are very important. Um, so collaboration is important. As you learn from our panelists, the workplace of the future increasingly values teamwork. And the desire to work with others different from yourself, different backgrounds, genders, functions, geographies, cultures, to create better, more durable results or a better working world, and the ability to work as a member of a team to achieve an agreed set of goals. So clearly all of our panelists and our volunteers who are joining are doing just that. Um, team roles. So we're gonna talk about some different team roles that you might have as a member of a team. And uh, we're going to encourage our students um, and our volunteers. If you if you uh, feel like you would be a good do a good job in a certain role that I'm going to mention in a moment, go ahead and post that role in the chat box. If something here kind of describes you, you can post that role in the chat box. So these are some common roles depending on your team's goal. Um, again, these are different for every team, but here's here's a few that are common. Um, a timekeeper keeps the team focused and ensure they meet deadlines. Leaders, make sure everyone has a chance to contribute and all team members understand the goal. Presenters will share the team's findings, ideas with other people. So again, students, if you feel like there's something here that you're good at, go ahead and post that in the chat. A um, couple more team roles here that are common. Uh, a recorder, keep a record of ideas and information, write reports for other written products. Uh, researcher, conduct research, find information. Artist and designer, Create visuals or other media pieces for presentations or other visual products. And again, what makes a good team player? And again, we, we heard this from our panelists. If you respect everyone on your team and be sensitive to everyone's concerns, earn the respect of your team members, contribute your ideas, explain your ideas persuasively, but make sure you remain open to the ideas of others. And then finally, keep your team's goal in mind and work towards it don't go off in the tangent. So these are some good uh, uh, things that make a good team player. But again, if you have, uh, if any of our volunteers have other ideas of what makes a good team player, uh, feel free to uh, post that in the chat room or we'll give everybody an opportunity to share it in a moment. Um, the four C's, we learned about these also from the panelists. Panelists, you really did set me up nicely. Um, there are four C's that are essential parts of effective teamwork on the job, communication, collaboration, creativity, and critical thinking, which we all talked about just now. And of course, this is uh, an acronym that I love. When you think about team together, everyone achieves more. Such an important part, to, important thing to consider when you're working with a team. Uh, it's not always the best to go it alone because together, everyone achieves more. So on that note, here is the prompt for our breakout session. Um, that will help you all work together on a collaborative problem solving project. So I'm going to give everyone a moment to read that and I'm going to assign breakout rooms. Um, now, this is going to take me just a minute to assign these breakout rooms. I wanna make sure that we have students in every breakout room. We do have more volunteers and students, which is okay because guess what volunteers, this is a great opportunity for you to maybe collaborate with some of your coworkers that you haven't had a chance to meet or speak with. 
So uh, this will be enjoyable for, for everybody, our students and our volunteers. And students, I'm gonna to try to get every, uh, a student in every breakout room. Hopefully I'll be okay with that. But please feel free to go ahead and read that. And um, all of our volunteers, if you'd like to take a moment while I'm doing these breakout rooms um, and, uh, and, and think about uh, some of your um, answers or experiences in team building, please go ahead and unmute yourselves and feel free to do that while I'm doing these breakout rooms. Uh, it, for me, I mean, it's I've learned so much about teams <clears throat> even before like many of these books were written. Because when you know you're in a, a a good team, it's you feel it, right? And there's a difference between a group and a team. Uh, it's very different. A team is actually a group of people with different skill sets and responsibilities to achieve a common goal. And the key is this diversity of of skills, and and that's where some energy really starts to kick up. So. It's um, it, it's 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 really fascinating, and I think the the other points too about what's important in being part of the team is uh, another thing is active listening skills is is important, and you know I bring that up a couple of times because it's actually a technique, and it's it's pretty nifty when all the team members use it. It's um, you get to the to the goal faster. It's not fun, a lot of fun. Barbarini. Yeah, just to add yeah. on that, um, you know, active listening, absolutely so important. Asking questions, clarifying what uh, the goal is, and um, just in, in general, being a team player are all very important skills as well. Um, I... I love the team that I'm on right now because uh, we all have different backgrounds that we're coming from. Um, so we have such a diversity in team members that when we come together and have conversations, they're all so thoughtful because we're all bringing something different to the table and able to um, offer up ideas that um, you know, I might not have thought of, but my colleagues did because of the different perspectives that they bring and the different background that, that um, you know, they have um, when they're looking at a problem. We're not all looking at it from the same lens. All right, thank you, everybody. Okay, so now I've uh, assigned our breakout room. Thank you for your patience. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, um, and start them. So uh, when you get there, um, maybe one can begin and uh, start off this conversation. Again, imagine that you're working together as a team. You've been given this challenge that you see on the screen. How are you going to work together to, first of all, find the problem and then solve it? Okay, so simply follow the prompt on your screen. We'll give everybody about uh, 10 minutes or so to have a conversation. And then we're going to bring everybody back into the name room. 